Hello and thank you for joining us today. My name is Dwight Blair, Dental Product Manager here at Roland DGA, and we are here to discuss gaining time and reducing costs with the time reduction kits. And I know uh, many of you have asked questions uh, for the past year, or should I say, that we've launched this product or at least advertised it at our trade shows. But now it is officially here and you can order it. Today we're going to get into the kit, kind of talk to you about how to use the kit, and I guess we can go to the next slide and talk about those things, but I'm glad you made it. So let's talk about what we're going to discuss today. And we're going to discuss these kits that allow the quick milling of models and removable dentures. And of course, that means uh, cutting down the milling time for milling either a model or a denture base as opposed to the analog way of doing things. Um, there might be a catch here with the models where kind of the time frame is exact, but when we talk about who this kit is really for as far as the model is concerned, you'll understand once we get to that segment. The next thing we're going to do is discuss a way to make your own millable acrylic and gypsum discs. And really this kit is designed for you to make your own millable disc. Uh, not necessarily that we're doing denture bases, but we are making acrylic discs that can be milled into a full denture or a partial denture or a model, and some other users have done some very unique things as well. Uh, the next thing we'll discuss is comparing that lab workflow along with the milling workflow for finishing a denture. And I know when we look at the digital denture workflow or even the analog workflow for doing full dentures, uh, the lab workflow encompasses, you know, a try-in, uh, a bite block, a wax rim, and a few other things. But we're really talking about once that try-in is approved by the doctor or the client, where you can push that to a finish and comparing lab times and workability. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to demonstrate a live walkthrough of the CAM workflow in Millbox. Uh, accordingly, we use Millbox here at Roland. Um, there are other CAM softwares out there. Uh, you just need to make sure that they're compatible with this kit, and we'll talk about that more later. And last but not least, we're going to talk about the multiple digital denture workflows you have as a DWX user. And that just doesn't include this time reduction kit, but we have many different solutions for you uh, depending on how you want to digitize your workflow and what applications you would like to offer to your clients. So let's get started. So our removable denture kit benefits, the first thing is it, it's a cost-effective custom material disc development system. And by that, uh, you're going to get a few accessories that are going to allow you to mix materials together and make a millable disc that can be milled on your DWX device. And the cost of that material, because you're making your disc yourself, is going to be significantly less than buying a disc from someone else or from some other manufacturer. The other thing we're going to talk about uh, is, as a benefit is uh, the simplified tooth setting when you use milled teeth as opposed to prefabricated teeth. Uh, usually prefabricated teeth can take anywhere between 20 minutes to an hour to set up. Uh, with the milled teeth, you're really just sitting in a milled straight arch right into the base and the tooth setting process is really about 20 to 30 seconds if that, if, if that should I say. Uh, the next thing is the faster turnaround times for the customer. So we'll talk about how long it normally takes an analog-based process in the laboratory today to uh, turn around a finished denture from the try-in stage versus what it would look like if you used a milling device. And of course, we're talking about improved milling technology. And that's comparative to, you know, milling denture bases off of full denture discs, the full rounded 98 by 10 millimeter discs that we have in the market today. And this is kind of a comparative to last year. I know we've heard some users that have uh, stated, you know, it takes seven hours or 15 hours to mill a denture base on a DWX machine. Well, we've actually significantly reduced that time and you can get these denture bases milled out in about two to three hours. Uh, of course, the other thing it promotes is a cleaner workflow. So when we talk about the analog process, you understand just all the different steps that go involved with uh, finishing up a denture. And uh, that leaves uh, plaster material, model-based material, there's polishing, there's cleaning, there's flash creation. We'll talk about that. But using a milling machine to do this process will basically clean up your lab workflow, make it a lot more efficient as well. And of course, we're also talking about a long-term lasting partial and full denture. And by that, we're talking about something that's going to kind of mimic or at least last just as long as the analog-based denture or partial that you make today. Um, acrylic materials are adjustable when you are using your own acrylic material or the materials that we suggest in this uh, webinar. Uh, you'll be able to create a denture that will last just as long, if not more than that time frame, for the normal dentures you make analog-based. So 
Last but not least, the simple post-production adjustments. Um, and this is kind of uh, comparative to other technologies that are out there where you, know, you use a resin-based material to make a denture, but when it comes down to adjustments, you either have to redo it from start or reprint, or you talk about acrylic where you can actually adjust that by hand. So when we start to mention things like relines or rebases, uh, that's very easy to do when you're using acrylic material because those things are adjusted easily. Let's say if there was uh, a bite adjustment that needed to be made because it's acrylic, you can fire that acrylic up, make some adjustments, and even add to it. Whereas if it's a resin-based material, that might be a bit of concern. So with those benefits, let's talk about the kit. The first thing you get is you're going to get about six full arch silicone molds. And these molds are your starting point for basically pouring your mixed material. Uh, the next thing you'll have is a silicone plate that fits right over the mold when you polymerize it. The next thing you have is a two millimeter flat end carbide burr. And this is sent with the kit. You get one with the kit. And uh, it's basically a flathead that kind of speeds up the roughing process. Uh, the next thing you get is mold tips. And these are little kind of plastic or thermoplastic pieces that fit on the edges of the mold to kind of keep its shape while you're milling so you don't have to worry about anything uh, being separated during the milling process. I'll discuss that in a second and show you how it fits. And of course we also send three of these fixtures. Uh, these are the fixtures that you will place your polymerized acrylic uh, denture disc in the uh, machine. You'll use this fixture to put into your adapter. We'll show you how to do that and you get a spatula which will help you level out the acrylic to make sure that 25 millimeter height is exact and just so you know the millimeters as far as thickness are concerned for these molds will produce a 25 millimeter blank. So let's take a look at these accessories uh, by themselves. First thing we have here is a silicone mold and as you notice the mold has uh, hinges right here. There's one hinge and then there's two hinges here on the other side and these tips uh, if you can see they have two hinges to fit one side and you slide that right in easily there and then the other one should I say has one hinge so you slide that in easily there and if you look at it when you're pouring your mixed acrylic material they're going to fit right on the side of everything and they'll be right uh, in position to keep the acrylic material in place and they bond very well with that acrylic. The next thing you have is a silicone mold. So if we leave this here, uh, you have a silicone mold. So when you put this in the polymerization pot, you basically go ahead and just place this on the top. And if it will keep everything in place for the most part, I've actually used this kit and with or without the silicone mold, it really does a, it does a pretty good job. Uh, the next thing you have is the actual fixture. And so with this fixture, it's similar to the uh, pen type material. Uh, you'll basically remove all three screws, keeping them in the actual top metal portion of the fixture. Put the uh, uh, actual uh, material inside and then place this back on top and screw it down. I'll show you how to do that once we talk about the actual workflow. And then you get this uh, two millimeter flathead tool. So you might be able to see it, but it's flat. If I put that against the wide, you can notice that the two millimeter flathead. I believe this is a one flute tool. So it uh, should help with removing PMA material quite swiftly. And with the kit, I know we talked about the tips, but you're going to get about 50 of these. And these are something that you can order if you run out or you can try to reuse totally up to you. Um, and uh, the kit, it, it's a very good kit that you uh, can use and make your own acrylic blanks. And going back in the PowerPoint, let's kind of look at how this all comes together when we look at uh, some of these other accessories that are not included in the kit and the actual workflow. So the first thing you're going to need is a weighing scale. This is going to weigh out the uh, powder-based acrylic material and the monomer in a actual measuring cup that you'll need. Uh, of course, that is the next thing that we don't send with the kit is the measuring cup. Now, I want to make this note. I know that uh, there are some labs out there that might have mixing machines, but I've, I've visited a couple of labs and for some reason some of them don't have scales because they're so used to, you know, using plaster material and kind of gazing what it would be and mixing it and everything works out. Well, you want to be a little accurate with the acrylic and the monomer. So the main thing is to make sure you have a scale, make sure you have a milliliter measuring cup. 30 is great. If you have 50 to 55, great. I would say you need to go no more than that. And then, uh, of course, you, you definitely have these things in your laboratory, a mixing bowl and a mixing knife. And uh, you also want to have the vibration pad, which I'm sure most labs do. And last but not least, the pressure pot. And there are acrylic materials that require air pressure 
to polymerize. There are some acrylic materials that do not. So you want to make sure whichever acrylic you're using, you get the terms of uh, use or the instructions for use and make sure you stay within those specific ratios, polymerize for the specific amount of time that you need to, and also uh, make sure you let it set for before you put in the polymerization pot. Um, we here at Roland, we offer a specific material. I'll talk about that in a second. And uh, that's where we get to the kind of the optional acrylic materials you can use. So the first thing is the Noble Tone uh, Pourable Acrylic. This is going to be something that we actually offer through Roland. I might have a separate slide on that. But the main thing you need to know is you're going to have an option of using a cold cured acrylic and a monomer, of course, to mix together. You're also going to have the option of using a semi-flexible acrylic material. Uh, there's a company called QDent that makes a semi-flexible acrylic material that actually can be used with this kit and uh, has been approved, from what I understand, for use. And the other thing you have is a self-cured or self-carrying acrylic and monomer. And, of course, the, the material that we're showing here is Opticryl. Um, we're kind of testing that right now, but definitely something to reach out to the manufacturer and find out if this is a material that works for you. Uh, the one thing that we are actually going to offer ourselves to make sure you get up and running is the Noble Tone Pourable Pink Vein Acrylic Powder. Uh, there'll be a couple of different uh, sizes you can order. Uh, there'll also be the Noble Tone uh, Pourable Acrylic Monomer. And then you also have the Rapid Razor Sharp 3.0 Toric in Burr. There is a lot, of, a lot of excitement about this tool in the market. I mean, at the last show that we went to, uh, people were really talking about this tool and its ability to cut away PMMA materials uh, quite easily. Um, there's actually a video we have on our website right now that kind of shows it in motion with a full PMMA disc. But this is something that in the future will be able to be used for the time reduction kits as well. So keep an eye out for that, but you'll be able to order it directly through Roland DGA. Now, how do we develop the acrylic material? Quite fairly easy if you're familiar with the plaster process and pouring up models. It's similar as far as uh, you need to mix an acrylic and a monomer together. Uh, basically make sure the racials are right. Um, and once you make sure those racials are right and you mix everything, there's a certain amount of time you may have before the acrylic sets or starts to harden. So while you're mixing, you get that done really quickly and then you pour it into the mold with the tips, of course, as you see in that picture in place and you mix that. And the next thing you're going to do is polymerize it. After you set it on a vibrator and make sure all the bubbles are out, you're going to put it in the pressure pot for a certain amount of time and let it sit. And then uh, once you pull it out, basically you're going to set it up and get it ready for the milling device. Now just to show you pretty much how easy it is to set up an acrylic disc for the milling device, here in my hand I have what everyone that has a 52D or later should know is a uh, material adapter. So we're going to loosen this up real quick. And then the first thing I want to do is take off the top of the material adapter. Now that I have that, we're going to take our jig here. And then if you notice in the back side of the jig, the question might be, how do we actually fit this in place? Well, if you see right here, there's a hinge and there's another hinge right here. So these two things are going to fit directly in between these two points. So once I turn this over and I put it down, you notice that there's really no give because both are fitting in the proper spot right here. All right. So now that we have that in place, the next thing we'll need to do is we'll need to take off the top to the actual fixture by removing the screws fully from the blue portion of the fixture. And as I do that, I should be able to release the metal cover at the top, or should I say, fastener. And then the next thing we'll do is we'll put on the adapter, slide it into place. Now we have this. We're going to tighten those things up. And for those of you who may not know how to tighten an adapter, I know I've had this question a couple of times. You want to go down on all four screws so it's lightly tightened, and then you want to go back in the X pattern. And tighten everything up specifically. So key thing is I can use these just like I'd use my uh, regular disc by leaving them in place or leaving this fixture in place and then what happens is once I mill in a, a acrylic disc I can just remove that leave the blue fixture and put another one in or I can just have multiple of these set up. So when I go to place it in the actual uh, poured acrylic disc this is the one that that I was able to do myself. If you notice here there is a opening right here that matches this opening. So I'm going to turn this around, 
place this in place, and there we go. And then I'm going to place over the top and put this back in place. So I'll go ahead and screw this part down. Same concepts, we have three screws, so we're going to go tight, slightly tight, or should I say very lightly tight. And we'll screw that portion. And we'll screw this portion. And we'll tighten that, tighten that, and we'll tighten that. Now, we have a fully available mold to be able to be used that we can mill because it's been polymerized and it's ready to go. Now, the one thing I do want to point out is, is this thing of caution. So I'm going to compare these two things. When I flip this over, you probably notice that, oh my goodness, there is a void. That's what we call a void. It's a slight uh, divot in the material that may not be milled out properly. And if this is inside of the material, that could happen. When I actually poured this sample up, um, there was one small drop of water that popped on the top of it when I put the, 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 uh, the mold into the polymerization pot because with this material, it was required to have at least uh, an inch of hot water inside. So once I placed it in the mold, one little water drop popped right there and then when it polymerized, this shrunk in. So that might be a challenge, which is why we want to make sure, like this one that I did, you want to make sure that there's no water on the top of it. You want to make sure that once you place it in the polymerization pot, that everything is still smooth and you should have a solid finish at 25 millimeters of height. So now that we've covered that, let's move on and talk about a couple of other things here. And let's talk about that analog versus the time reduction kit workflow comparison. So in our labs today, when we do a denture or when we finish a denture, should I say, from the try-in steps, there is a few different steps that sometimes we really don't pay attention to uh, when we talk about digitizing the entire workflow. Now, the first thing is investing the denture base, or should I say the denture material in the flask. Of course, that's where we're trying to keep the actual tooth set up, and uh, we need to make sure we create that, and then we have the wax material in there that we need to boil out to get ready to inject the acrylic material into. But before we do that, the third step is basically making sure we add separating fluid to the model so that everything comes out properly, and then you place the teeth, of course, gluing them into place. And then once you have that flask with the, uh, with the plaster material or the mold material in place, you're going to inject the acrylic into the model. And then once that's done, you usually have to separate all the plaster, uh, polymerize and cure the acrylic, of course, remove the plaster from the denture model, and then trim and polish. That process itself for one denture can take anywhere between 24 to 96 hours, which is one to four days. Now, even if you took the time to just do one denture one by one, which is what we're talking about, if you did one denture, yes, you might be able to do three or four, but your waiting process for that whole time frame is still 24 to 96 hours unless you have a 24-hour lab, which means you can get it done in one day. Well, the main concept of bringing in digital devices to man this workflow, especially for this finished portion, is the process is a lot faster and a lot more streamlined. So once you have these acrylic blanks completed, all you would need to do is mill the acrylic material with the setup that we have, then mill the teeth, and then once you mill the teeth, that adds maybe an extra hour or so to the job. But then once you polymerize and cure the acrylic base and the teeth together and polish and finish that up, which doesn't take much time, uh, you pretty much are done within less than six hours. Now I have a full denture base lower less than six hours. Now a question might be, well, you know, um, that's one machine being locked up for one denture that's completed in six hours. So if I'm thinking about that average estimate, maybe that's two every 12 hours. And this is where we say, hey, you have a DWX52 DCI, you have a disc changing device, get two of those, let one do your teeth, let one do your denture bases, and still do your crown and bridge materials on another machine. That allows you to speed up your workflow. We're talking about finished dentures here for patients, and it's going to be a lot more lucrative for your business. Now, the next thing we want to discuss, if I can get to the next slide, is the output time. That was always a question of how long does it take? Well, one full arch denture base, on average, from the mills that I've been able to mill, take about three hours and 55 minutes in Millbox software. Uh, the arch, full arch crown with the 3.0 Torque tool takes about an hour and 30 to an hour and 46 minutes. I put the hour and 46 minutes as an average. So you're looking at about five hours and 41 minutes total time of milling a denture base with the PMMA material. Now, before I go forward, I know I mentioned uh, actually the tooth setting process. And we can go to a breakaway camera real quick and just look at this. 
Here is a milled denture base. This is actually done out of PMMA material, but I just want to give you an idea of how easy it is when you set teeth and you mill out the teeth instead of doing the prefab setup. So I have a milled denture base. I have not polished this denture base at all. As you can notice, the uh, connectors are still on the denture base. This looks pretty well polished, pretty good actually. Um, so if I have a milled bridge, all I got to do is take that bridge and place it in place. And I have a denture. The next thing I need to do, of course, is polymerize it, but I would have to put some monomer here so the acrylic bonds to each other because I get a chemical on chemical bond. And then once this is polymerized for maybe five to ten minutes, I can go ahead and clean this up and I have a full denture for a patient ready to go. That's how easy it is when we go with the milled process. So now that you know that, let's talk about something else, which is the cost, and that's always an important factor. So when we talk about high quality PMMA discs for denture bases or even partial bases, we're really talking about maybe somewhere about $150 to $200. There are some out there that are a lot more than that. Um, you know, I won't mention any manufacturer names, but there are a lot more expensive ones than $150, but I'll use that as a baseline. We also have the affordable PMMA disc. Uh, the cheapest PMMA disc I was able to purchase was about $36, somewhere around there. Uh, of course, the tax is not included. And that will get you one disc, or one, should I say, one uh, denture blank or one partial base or frame and you're looking at a total cost of $150 or $36 for using that whole disc, plus the wasted material that you have there. Now, when you look at using something, for instance, like the Noble Tone Pink Vein Acrylic Powder and the monomer, mixing that together to make a blank, you get a lot more units for your price. And then when you look at your actual cost of each acrylic disc, uh, it's very significantly less. You're looking at about $7.91 for just making an acrylic disc. Now, when we start talking about how that looks when we talk for finished teeth, well, that all depends on your quality PMMA disc, and that's for the tooth-shaded PMMA. So you take your tooth-shaded PMMA, which might be anywhere around $100. Uh, the most affordable one that I've seen is about $18. You take that disc of material, you've got two units that you can get out of it, an upper and a lower, of course, or even just two uppers, but the disc is large enough to at least get two bridges milled in the same disc. And that cost goes down, cut it in half, you're looking at about a cost for a high quality of about $50, and a low quality one is about $9. Now when you add that with the denture base cost for the, with the removable denture kit of mixing your own acrylic, of course, you're looking at about $7.91 plus about $9. So your high quality finished denture is $57.91 of lab costs as far as materials are concerned, and your estimated cost for an affordable denture would be about $16.91. Now, for the going rate and even for premium dentures, that's very inexpensive, especially when you think about the time and the, the manpower to do this workflow. Uh, it's really just going to be a machine and somebody to, to cure teeth into place and then polish it up and clean it up with a handpiece. That's not going to take too much time at all, whereas if you look at the normal process, you've got someone to set the teeth, you've got to go through plaster, you've got to boil everything out. Even the boiling process sometimes can take a very long period of time. Uh, there are some steps in the process that take six to eight hours, and we're just talking about one denture. So just imagine if something goes wrong, we're here, you can still make adjustments and you have the shape done already. So moving on to the next slide, we got to look at the accessories and pricing. Of course, the kit itself costs a uh, little under $1,250 USD. Uh, that's an MSRP price. And uh, the two millimeter flat end carbide burr is included with the kit, but if you need a separate one, it's about $110. Uh, if you need fixtures or you want to have extra fixtures to kind of keep your productivity going with your disc changing device, uh, you basically have that for $180. You can add another one to it. And the mold tips, they come in a box of 50 of 25 for each one. As we said, one has two hinges, one has one, and that is $169.95. And then we have the three millimeter razor rapid chart torque in burr, which is sold separately, does not come with the kit, and that's $65. Now, if you look at all these, uh, these uh, accessories, all of these come with the kit except for the 3mm Rapid Razor Sharp Torque and Burr. Of course, you're still going to get the spatula. You're still going to get an extra uh, screw that goes into the kit to hold the fixture down. Um, all those things are included with the kit. The materials do not come with the kit. We are also expecting that the laboratory is going to have all of those accessories that we said were not included. So if they don't, um, you as a lab would need to get those things in order to operate this kit successfully. All right, next we're going to talk about the pricing for the actual material itself. And these are materials that are offered through Roland DGA that you can purchase directly through us or through a reseller, of course. And uh, basically, that's the Peak Vein Acrylic Powder. Uh, we have those in two different sizes. 
and of course the price MSRP value is there. Uh, we also have the liquid monomer as well. This will complete the materials that you will need for the acrylic disc and uh, those come in two sizes as well. The SKUs are our part numbers on our system. You can look them up by part number or material on our website, uh, basically once uh, you are ready to order. Uh, the other thing we have here is the frequently asked questions. And I love to have this up because we get these uh, questions at our shows and sometimes I have people kind of reach out to me on social media. So I just wanted to kind of discuss a couple of those today. Uh, the first one is, wouldn't porosity become an issue when creating a milling, or should I say creating a milling denture disc? And the answer is, uh, when we're talking about porosity, just so everybody that may not understand what that term means, it's pretty much voids or holes in the acrylic material when it tends to harden you pour it too quick uh, there could be some type of air pocket that forms and then if you try to mill something like this it's a void that's there which will not come into the shape of the actual denture. It could either weaken it or there could be a part where that's milled and it doesn't mill out correctly because there's no material to mill there. The answer is, the first thing is if you pour properly and you pour at a certain level usually the acrylic is going to go in properly and then if you talk about the time frame for this curing you want to make sure you get it into the mold as fast as possible. But the other thing is the vibration pad. Once you use the vibration and get all the bubbles out you should be pretty good to go and as far as this acrylic material that we are offering through Nobilium, um, it basically uh, sits seats at a certain time frame. So you actually have a lot more time before you need to put it in the polymerization pot that'll allow it to sit and you'll have enough time to actually be able to adjust it and make sure those bubbles are out. So is it an issue? As long as you're, it's not an issue as long as you're doing it the right way, should I say. The next question that we get is uh, if you can use a heat cured acrylic to make mold shaped acrylic discs with this removable denture kit? Um, my answer is going to be no, because we have not tested it. We do not know if that's something that you can do. Um, basically, heat cured acrylic may have a different effect on the mold, and I would highly suggest that you stick with the cold cure, self curing, or semi flexible acrylic options that are out in the market today. Last question, of course, I will ask for the removable denture kit is, or at least that we re receive, is how does this kit uh, how does using this kit, should I say, to mill dentures compare to developing a denture with a 3D printer? Now we all know that there's a lot of 3D printers in the market. This is a growing technology. Uh, it has definitely improved over the past few years and many users are using this technology in their laboratory to uh, digitize their denture or removable process. And we are all for that. The thing is, there's a portion of the workflow where 3D printing fits in and there's a portion of the workflow where milling fits in. And I think if you want to have a full digital denture or digital partial denture workflow using acrylics, then you want to have both. And the reason being is we always hear this argument about the resins and how long they last or how long they're going to be in the patient's mouth or the ability to make adjustments. Sometimes when we look at adjustments, we look at, oh, okay, yes, we can always print out another one. Printing out another one takes time. When we start to say, hey, how can you reline and reblaze, rebase? Uh, acrylics, or should I say resins, don't have the same properties as acrylics do, where acrylics you can go ahead and do a reline and a rebase quite fairly easy or the, the same way you normally do an analog-based denture. And then when we talk about longevity, we're really talking about how long this acrylic is going to hold up in the patient's mouth and how long it can handle the load, which is something that we really don't talk about with resin-based materials. So resins are great, but the loading process is a bit of a challenge as far as a patient's heavy bite and other things that might happen. So when we're talking about long term, that six months to a year or longer, acrylics are still the best way to go. Uh, that's something that unfortunately today you can't do with a 3D printer and some of the resins that are out there haven't been tested to last more than three to six months or at least I haven't seen any reports. So my suggestion would be if you want to go from finish or should I say from trying to finish with the digital process use a 3D or should I say a milling device. For your your custom trays, your bite blocks, all those other temporary uh, appliances or should I say even the emergency denture and you want to go through the two setting process for that as well, um, basically go ahead with 3D printing because it's better for it, it's a little more affordable, it's easier to get that stuff done. It's just that when you want something finished to last a longer period of time and you want it to have the adjustability, you want to go with an acrylic that you know is going to work. And that's what this kit allows you to do with acrylic material that you should have in your laboratory. Um, moving on. The next kit up that we really haven't talked about is the model kit. When we talk about the comparison to other technology, for instance, like 3D workflows, the cost for one model blank milled on a machine is about maybe 89 or 90 cents. 
versus however much it's going to cost for the resin to be printed up. So that cost effectiveness might be a benefit for your, for your laboratory. Uh, the other thing is it's a great solution for small and hybrid labs needing an adjustable model. So if you need to adjust the opposing or the occlusion, occlusion or the adjacent teeth, um, you know, there's a way to do that with the gypsum material that you mill versus reprinting a resin. That sometimes is a better benefit. Uh, the other thing, of course, is the articulator. And you can use an, a three-shape articulator to articulate the upper and lower models together, which means you don't have to go through plastering the models uh, or articulating them on our articulator. And uh, that's an extra part of the process. You still have the option of making dyes because it's gypsum-based material. And yes, you are using a machine to mill it. And it takes a little bit of time. But I would say it's still fairly around the same time it would take for one model to go from start to finish, which is about 50 to two minutes to an hour. It's a little bit more than that if you just put it in the milling device and let it mill. So using that, the model kit accessories, we have a full art silicone mold. We also have a quadrant silicone mold, which I think is key for those small cases. We pour up models and we want something to get done while we do other things. That's why I say this model kit is a great kit for a small lab or hybrid uh, uh, business that basically has maybe like a one technician shop that has to do design, that has to go and uh, do other cases. You can put the machine to work for you while you're doing your design work for a couple of cases. And if you have a couple of machines, it really makes everything kind of work out without adding too much extra equipment to your setup. Uh, the other thing, of course, is uh, the two millimeter flat end carbide burr is also sent with this kit. And you do get three fixtures as well. And there is a leveling spatula. Now, the ports that said not sold separately, we really don't sell these uh, uh, items separately. Uh, they do only come with the kit, but the ones that actually have a product code or a SKU, uh, you can get those uh, through your reseller or through the Roland website. The things that are not sold with the kit, of course, yes, you will need a scale once again to measure the amount of gypsum-based material. Of course, you can always eyeball it, but there are some materials that require for you to max the water ratio with the actual amount or grams of uh, gypsum-based powder that you're putting together. Uh, the measuring cup, of course, is ideal. You want to have one. 30 milliliter cup is easy. These are very small ones. We actually have some here. And then we have the leveling, uh, should I say, the uh, mixing bowl and mixing knife. And we have a vibration pad because you still want to make sure there's no voids or bubbles in the gypsum-based material. And then we have the plaster mixer. And there's a lot of these today that you can grab, but really it's like a 30-second to a minute mixing process to make sure everything's fine and smooth. And then you get that mold out, place it on the vibration pad, and let it rip. So looking at how to develop gypsum models for milling, well, you have the measure, mix, and pour step where you're going to mix it using that uh, mixer that we just showed you and you're gonna mix the gypsum powder and the water together at its proper ratio uh, using a mixing bowl, of course. And then once you've mixed everything and you, you can pour it into the mold on the vibration pad, and the next thing you have is an actual model that you can basically place into the fixture, similar to the acrylic disc process. So, uh, but we'll show you a couple of things here. And then uh, the setup and milling, once you mill it out, you basically have a model that you can adjust or you can basically add the three-shape articulator and place it on. And I'll show you a couple of things here if we cut to the uh, side camera. Um, here is, an, a, uh, here is a, a model here, a full arch model that we have. I actually poured this up. Uh, very strong material. It's from, uh, got this from ETI uh, uh, Empire and uh, they have some very good gypsum based material. I also have this, um, this quadrant based one. And these quadrants actually take a very minimal amount of time to mill, so these are pretty good to use. As far as the molds themselves, they're also 25 millimeters in, in depth or thickness. So you have your full arch mold here, and then you have, well, I don't have the quadrant. Here's another full arch, so sorry about that. Um, the other thing we were talking about is the three-shape articulator. We don't offer this. This can be purchased uh, through three-shape or resellers that offer this actual accessory. But the key thing here, let's say this is my milled uh, model, should I say. And of course, this is right off the machine. Here's that hinge that we were talking about. And then if you look at three shape here, it is here. So if I wanted to place this, I would simply just put this in a position real easily. If I had a lower arch, I can put that here and then I can articulate. And if I need to adjust it, of course, there's some adjustments that I can make. There's a, um, a kind of like a screwdriver that adjusts the three-shape articulator to fit the proper occlusion. And now we're talking about removing plaster from the process. So let's jump back in the PowerPoint real quick. Of course, this kit does not come with tips because tips are not needed to build gypsum material, just to let you know that. 
So let's talk about the output times for the model kit now that you've seen some of the accessories. And one of the key things, at least with these times, is when you talk about standard quality full arch and quadrant model, you can get a quadrant model done in about 34 minutes, and you can get a full arch model done in about an hour and 29 minutes. Of course, the other times deal with high quality, and that just means using an extra tool in the milling process, like a 0.6 or a 1.0, to refine everything a little bit further. That is your choice, and that's also made in the CAM software. The other thing is we have the accessories, and just like the other kit, the model kit is 24, basically a little under 24,550, so $1,250. And um, it does come with a 2.0 millimeter flat end carbide burr. It is the same exact burr from the other kit, and you get three TRK fixtures. Now here's the fun stuff. How do I get the software that combines the other portion of the kit so I can output uh, my files to the milling device? Well. We do have the modules available for Millbox users. It is available on our website, the Roland DGA website. And to my understanding, you can download this no matter which version, or should I say reseller you're working with, um, as long as you have the latest version of Millbox. If you are some 3D user, you need to have the latest version of Millbox. 2018 users have access to these modules, but in order to have uh, exact functionality and ensure everything's gonna work well, you want to have the latest update. My suggestion to you would be to talk to your reseller and make sure that you have the latest version that they offer. And once you have that, you can go ahead and download the module for whichever denture or model kit and whichever machine that you have. And basically that will automatically plug in the module when you launch Millbox the next time. So definitely here, these are the things that you want to do. You want to definitely download it. And now while we have that up, I guess I should kind of demonstrate a workflow once I log into my computer here. All right. And um, so as far as Millbox is concerned, the, the process is pretty much still simplistic. I'm running version 4.9.1 here. And um, basically the difference that you see in the workflow is now instead of selecting a DCI or a D or a DC, I'm going to have the option of selecting the 52 DCI denture and then, of course, it has its own tool package here. Now, we got to kind of address something here. Sometimes uh, I know we all have different milling devices, and sometimes we want to use different tools. And really, some of the issues that happen with milling quality is the tools that you're using because they're not plugged in to the strategy. So you might feel like you have a 1 millimeter or a 2 millimeter or a 0 0.6, but the actual dimensions of the tool design are different than what's plugged into the software, which could lead to issues. So this is where we would say, if you're using something other than the Sierra Dental Tools or the specific milling uh, profiles uh, for your tools have not been plugged into your CAM software, you need to reach out to your reseller to make sure that happens so you don't run into any milling quality concerns. Now, as far as these tools are concerned, we have the Sierra Dental Tools plugged in with the US tools. I'll make sure that's selected and click OK. And then the fixture is already preset as well as the material. And then once we do that, we're going to go ahead and click the check mark. Now, the next thing I need to find, let's just say if I wanted to mill a denture, is either the denture top or bottom. Now, notice my uh, indication or application setting is pretty much already fixated on denture. I'm going to go with the denture base top, and I am going to click OK. Millbox already has the size of the mold plugged into the software. All it's going to do is take this just like any type of crown and bridge workflow and place the object as best as it can in the middle of the, uh, the denture. And then from this stage, we're really just kind of adding connectors. So as this is processing, I know I'm using a laptop. Normally, you'll have a high PC computer at your, at your laboratory, and this process will be a whole lot faster. So don't get too concerned about the speed here as we are uploading a large size object. Now that we have it in place, uh, of course, we want to, it says one or more objects have not been positioned due to insufficient space. So basically, we want to rotate this just a little bit, make sure everything is in position. I can see it's kind of at a slant, so I'm going to rotate it uh, just a little bit. And then what I'll do is I will lower it so everything is within the scope of the space. It's really what we're trying to do. And once we have the right angle, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add connectors. So I'm going to add a connector. The suggestion right here when you're doing dentures is about 
maybe five connectors. First thing we want to go is a buckle flange, and I want to use my square type connector here. I'm going to go with a pin height of four millimeters as well as a width of four millimeters. And I'm going to add one here on the buckle flange. I'm going to also add one on uh, the, if you want to call it the facial flange, you can. And then I'm going to add another one on the other buckle flange. And then I want to add one right on the internal lingual side of the flange. I normally would add one right at the tail end, which is something that you can do for models, but it really depends on the shape of what you're bringing in. So for this one, I would put this on the lingual portion, and I would also put one on the other side. Sorry, this is going to pop in a different area, but let me go ahead and rotate this real quick. And I would put one right here. And now that I have all of those positioned the way I want to, I would just kind of recheck to make sure everything is inside. And maybe I might even want to do a click a check mark OK and rotate just one more bit. And then we're going to go ahead and process it. So that's pretty much uh, the process. And we're going to clean this up. But basically, this, uh, this portion just aligns with whichever disk you're going to use. Uh, there'll be an adapter selector there for DCI users. And um, they'll be able to go ahead and pretty much select A through Z as far as their adapters are concerned and basically set up the denture for that adapter as long as, of course, it's in the milling device or you're going to place it in later. The next step I want to show you is just the milling options that you have. Once the job starts processing, it gets to 5%. You want to make sure you select the uh, option or should I say the job that associates with your specific uh, file or the design file. In this case, it's 3Shape. So I can select the 3-shape ExoCAD. Then you have an option here of choosing anatomical milling, which means I'm going to come in with a 1-millimeter tool and refine a little bit more. Uh, it might also be an option for 0.6 if you're milling PMMA material. I click OK. And then basically the next thing I should see is uh, tool setup, which we definitely want to follow. So when the tools pop up, you want to make sure you go to your ATC or your automatic tool changer and check and confirm that all the tools that you have in these slots are set up in this manner. For instance, my first slot is, uh, of course, a product code, but that's the one millimeter tool. The second slot is the two millimeter tool, and the nine slot is the two millimeter flat end tool that comes with the kit. So make sure these tools are in these slots, and you're using the tools that we are recommending, which are basically Sierra Dental Tool, unless you have your tools plugged into the software. With that, I'll go ahead and let this process, but we can jump right back into the PowerPoint. Let's also just kind of review a couple of things here with upgrading Millbox, and here's a couple of software tips for doing so. Uh, first off, the modules are available for download on the DGA website today, so you can download those as long as you have the latest version of Millbox, and it's available for those 2018 users as well, as long as you have the latest version. Uh, the other thing you want to do is sometimes when you install these uh, updates, uh, your computer security settings could cause some issues with the installation process. So my suggestion would be to disable temporarily your security to make sure the software is downloaded properly. Uh, if not, sometimes there might be a couple of different things or items that don't get installed because the computer might think it's malware. So I want to make sure you do that. Talk with your reseller if you do have a challenge or even your IT guy. Uh, you want to run each update as the administrator, which gives you access to overriding a few things and will help with the installation process. And as I mentioned a couple of times, the models or modules are compatible for the Millbox version 2018 or later, but you want to make sure you have the latest version. Talk to your reseller about that. We'll come to a close today with our frequently asked questions. And um, basically, one of those questions is, can our company purchase the three-shape articulator directly from Roland DGA? Of course, the answer is no. Uh, if the res your reseller sells it, you can definitely purchase it from them. Or you can reach out to three-shape directly. Uh, the other thing is, uh, will the time reduction kit modules be available for users that do not have mailbox software? Uh, the answer is yes. As far as when that will happen, I'm unsure. If you have a question about your CAM software and if they have modules for the time reduction kits, whether it be the removable denture or the model, talk to your reseller and ask them when that will be available. The last but not least, will both kits be available for DWX50 users? Uh, fortunately, at this time, these kits are only available for the DWX52 series and later. That means 52D users, 
52 DC users and 52 DCI users will have access to the kit. All right, well, that concludes our question segment. Just a couple of other things to leave you with. Uh, we will have a few additional resources. Of course, one comes with the kit. It is the user guide. So if you basically forgot everything I talked to you about today as far as the workflow, here is a workflow that kind of walks you through each step of basically pouring the materials, pouring it into a mold, polymerizing it, putting it in a disc, and placing it into your milling device. Just remember, your acrylic material, depending on which ones you're using, may have different specifications for mixing and pouring. Make sure you follow those instructions for use. The other thing we're going to have as far as uh, for those Noble Tone users is we're going to have the uh, DFU, which is directions for use or instructions for use. Uh, you can use that to follow the uh, ratio of, I believe it's 21 milliliters of powder, should I say grams of powder, towards every 14 milliliters of the acrylic monomer. Um, that is the ratio that you go with. For one of these molds, for my test, you can fill up a mold with about 84 grams of powder towards 56 milliliters of monomer. So keep that in mind. Uh, the next thing we also are going to have for you is we will have a walkthrough guide for the removable denture kit and the model kit to kind of help you easily walk through the process for build box and setting one of these up for your DWX device. So the absolute last, last thing we'll talk about today is just uh, basically the multiple denture workflows you have for, for DWX users. I know we kind of talk about this. We have users that ask us if they can do a MERS denture on the 52D machine or the DCI. Unfortunately, you cannot do that for the 52D series. Uh, the 52D is possible if you change the clamp, and here is the actual MERS clamp. In order for you to use this, you would need to replace the current clamp in your milling device. I would probably uh, suggest make sure you understand how to do that before you do. Um, here's the top portion of the clamp. You can still mill disc type materials, but you do lose the, uh, the functionality of the uh, adapter system for the 52D. This is ideally meant for the 51D users. If you want to use the MERS denture workflow or you want to mill MERS, here's the MERS denture. It fits right into this clamp. You can definitely do that, and you will still have to replace the clamp for your device as well. It's the C clamp. Of course, we also talked about the time reduction kit, and that's what this whole discussion is today. Here's the model base one. We also have the, or should I say, this is the acrylic one. We also have the model one. And then you have millable PMMA. So millable PM, PMMA disc can be milled, and you can mill the teeth and easily set your two setting process. And then we also have uh, materials like a dual shaded, should I say, not we, but in the market, you can purchase dual shaded PMMA material where one side is two shaded, the other side is acrylic base, and you basically kind of uh, touch everything up after you mill out the teeth and the base together. This one is from Polydent, but uh, there's other things like that. So, and you have the Avident workflow as well for those users who know about that workflow. So when you look at it, there's like five or six different denture finishing workflows that you can use for, for DWX users, and we have them all on our devices. That about wraps up today. I want to thank you once again for this webinar. I know there was a lot of information. I hope everything that was said will help you be successful in your laboratory or your hybrid practice today. And uh, we want to thank you for being a DWX user and participating today. Have a wonderful time, Millie.